So Fort Lynn has our prayer for the speaker this morning. He has an announcement he wants to make that's very important. So wait, kids, any kids go on back to the children's church? Did I announce that? Okay, children, go back to Children's Church if you'd like. Rhonda's waiting back there. Got some going back. All right, Lynn. All right, thank you, Gary. Actually, I have two things I want to tell you about or talk to you about. One is an announcement about something new. One is a reminder of something old. So just bear with me. First of all, last week, Gary kind of teased you with our plans for our Bible study classes for next year, or this year. Excuse me, this year, uh, which will begin actually the end of February slash 1st of March, and I'll explain that in just a minute. The name of the series is The Story. Has anyone ever heard of this series? We got one in the back. This, was edit this is edited by Randy Frazee and Max Licato. And what it is is 31 weeks of sermons and Bible classes. And as Bible classes for all ages, we'll all be talking about the same thing each week. Now, don't go out and buy the book. There are books for each age group, beginning with the adult book, which is 500 pages, by the way. Then we have the teenage book, which is about 400 pages. And then we have child uh, uh, age appropriate books for the children. Okay. Now, each member of the Destin Church, it will be furnished a adult or teenage book. This has been approved by the elders, paid for by the elders, actually already paid for. So we got the books coming. The, each family who has a child will receive a book. Each child won't receive a book, but each family will receive a book. And that is designed for the parents to read the stories to the children. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, oh, by the way, this is something that someone has said. The story is 100% filled with God's word, yet is not 100% of God's word. It's a story. It's the Bible in a story form. That's where we get the title. It is the Bible put in a way to read like a story. It is not the Bible but is meant to whet your appetite for the Bible. It is never to replace the Bible, but to send you to the Bible. We'll be giving out the books later at the end of February. On February the 26th, Gary will give us an introductory sermon. We will not have a class that day pertaining to the story. He will finish his series that he's in now. But beginning the first Sunday in March, March the 5th, will be the official kickoff where Gary again will have a sermon, and then the Bible classes will start that week. In the coming weeks, you'll start seeing some signage around the, the church building, inside and outside, and we're working, we have a team working on some promotional materials where you can hand out to your friends and neighbors and invite them. If you have any questions, see Gary or myself. Okay. Uh, does, that, does everybody got that? You'll hear more about it in the coming weeks, so just, just bear with us. Now, the reminder. Uh, Tuesday, you should have members should have received a link uh, about the church survey in your email. As of last night, about 11 o'clock, we have a 41% response rate, which is real good, I think, for the first week. But you got two more weeks. The elders are asking for two more weeks. So go ahead and, and, and do the survey, and this will give the elders an idea of kind of the direction they want to take the church in the next 5, 10, 20 years. So if you have any questions about that, see Jilda <laughs> or myself. If you have a question about a particular question, why it's worded a certain way, let me know, and I'll explain to you. Like I told someone the other night, 99% of those questions came to me from other people. I did not make up the questions. I just composed them and combined them and kind of put them in some sort of order and uh, then worked with Jilda and we got it out to everyone. So, again, if you have any questions about either of those, you can see me and our Gary and our Jilda. Okay? Now, let's pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, this beautiful day that you've given to us. We just ask that you uh, be with us now as Gary presents a lesson from your word. Give us an open heart, open minds as he presents that word to us. And in Christ's name, amen. Thank you for that announcement. Uh, so, church, let me tell you right up front, I'm excited about this year. Uh, we, we do have this series starting, uh, it, which is an exciting time, is getting ready for that, reading these books. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it and be excited about it as well. Uh, I wish that uh, you would actually show your excitement a little bit more, but uh, I know that's It, it is. It is. You're, you're not a very Pentecostal group of people right now, but uh, it, it is exciting. It is exciting. We have our homecoming. I mentioned it. We have that in October, first homecoming. I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about the survey. Surveys are scary things. Uh, you know, uh, fill it out and uh, be kind, please. Um, but uh, it, 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 it can be a scary thing doing, doing these, uh, having these surveys done because our elders would like to uh, lead in the most effective way possible and just some questions about different things, and we would love for you to participate in that. So I'm excited about that as well. We have uh, shepherd uh, affirmation, reaffirmation, some deacon, uh, possibly new deacons. We have a lot of great things going on to our guests yeah, I know you're down here maybe just a few days or a week or so, but uh, we're an active group of people, and, and the more I see, <laughs> not Pentecostal, but we're active, um, so let me get back to my notes. <laughs> I think where I have been before, where there's so much activity and there's things going on, um, there's, there's, there's one who's called evil, one who call, is called Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, a lot of different names that hates good activity. Expect to be attacked. We have good things going on. This series coming up called A Story is basically an overview of the Bible. It's not a, uh, you know, it is an overview. I, I taught, I remember teaching a, I was adjunct professor at Faulkner University and taught a couple of classes there. And it was a, an over, one of the classes I had was overview of the Bible. Overview of the Bible. I had a, a quarter to teach the Bible. And I had people in there who were preacher's kids, and I had ones that never owned a Bible in their life, and I got to give them an overview of the Bible. Yeah. Good luck to all of them. Uh, it, was, it, it was an interesting thing. However, this, we have like 31 weeks, a lot longer to do it. This combined with our, our Bible classes and small groups, right, Lynn? Aren't they going to be involved? We have materials that if small groups would like to follow along with this, they can as well. So this is an exciting time for us, and I, and I want you to be excited about it. I want you to get the book and start reading it, and, and, and um, we haven't decided yet if, if we're going to have a, a list of all the sermons. We'll have a few breaks in there, such as over Easter and some other times, but uh, you'll be able to follow along in the book as well as with my lessons and the Bible classes. So be excited about that. It's a great time to be a member here at the Destin Church. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. That's the most Pentecostal thing y'all will ever do for me. So we're here in, in our second week of a series called Hooked. Okay, This is not a pirate uh, sermon series. Not at all. It is, it is a series about fishing and fishermen and nets and the ocean and things such as that, uh, that they would know back in the ancient Near East, back in the uh, early church, uh, that we can also know now, especially down here in Florida, correct? We have fishing all around us, fish all around us. We know about these things. So 
We talked some about this last week um, when we learned from Matthew chapter 13 in, in verses 47 through 48. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake, caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets and threw the bad away. So kind of as we expand upon this verse today, we're going to take a a little bit deeper dive, really, into Jesus' original interactions with some of his disciples back then. We're going to talk, talk about who they were, how they responded to the call of Jesus. And then we're going to, we're going to look a little bit as what can we learn from their response. Now, let me go ahead and tell you this, okay? As you know, as Christians, we should be encouraging others to follow Christ. You know that. That's common knowledge. Yes? Do your heads this way. Maybe we should invite people to church. Oh, that's a neat thought. Maybe we should invite them into our homes. Maybe we should get to know them. Maybe we should just be kind to people. And we are going to talk about this a little bit today because, and I want you to see this. You might be closing your mind off because you might be the most introverted person. You say, I can't invite anybody to church. I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, okay, we have our different ways of loving people and introducing them to the Lord. I have met people before in my ministry who've never owned a Bible in their life. They didn't grow up with the Bible. I mean, I grew up in Central Alabama, churches everywhere. We had Bible. We had the family Bible. You remember the family Bible, right? It had all the notes in there. I... Later on, we had a church thing where I had to dress up and have a, a boutonniere and uh, went with a cute little girl. She got me that, and I remember I took that boutonniere and I put it in a family Bible and smushed it down in there. You know, I just thought of that, too. Uh, I wonder if that boutonniere is still there. <laughs> Nevertheless, some people have not been introduced to the Bible or to the Lord, and all the Bible stories, all of the, 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 the Abraham, the the Noah and the Isaac, all the, these, these famous people that we know so well in the Bible. Some people don't know those names. They do not know those names. I have met people who I have introduced to the Lord or tried to, and they wanted nothing to do with it. I've met them before where they didn't want to have anything to do with it, but then later on, they did. You know, think of it like this, and think of it during this lesson today. We don't know what kind of ground we're going to throw any seed on. We're to scatter seed, though. God takes care of the rest. We can do our part. I told you last week where I've been thinking about evangelism a lot lately. I've been thinking about inviting people to church and and, and as I was going to my physical therapist and, and um, having therapy done on my, my left hand, you know, I, I asked her where she attended worship. We talked about spiritual things. And then uh, her receptionist, I talked to her a lot uh, while I was there and, and learned more about her life story and talked to her about spiritual things. I was at Home Depot the other day and a young lady there, I mean, this is... You know, it's not all, you, you, you might think, well, you're the preacher. You're supposed to be doing that all the time. Okay, but I'm an introvert. It's not the easiest thing for me to do. But I talked to the lady there about spiritual things. <laughs> now, will, where will this go? I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I'm trying to get my mind in the right place to talk to people about the Lord. Because I, personally, I feel like I have fallen down on that. And I need to be doing that all the time. So, what can we learn today about our faith as we look at the kind of people that Jesus engaged in ministry? What are the broader implications of spreading wide the kingdom net 
as we talked about and we learned last week, you know, it's our job to participate in the spreading of the kingdom net in the gospel of Jesus and, and as it gathers as, as many as possible. God will do his part. He's invited us to be part of that process. So, let's look at Mark chapter 1, verses 18 and 20. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net to the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he'd gone a little farther, farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with their hired men and followed him. Isn't this pretty amazing to you that Jesus gets such a profound response when he says, follow me? I wish that I would get that response when I am talking to people about the Lord. That they want that. They're eager to have it. Now, who is this guy? Who is, who is this man, Jesus? I've actually had someone ask me that before. I, it was a young airman working on a flight line in, uh, at davis Monthan Air Force Base. He came to me and said, I've heard people talk about this guy, Jesus. I don't know anything about him. Chaplain, can you tell me about him? I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was happy for weeks. That was just like astounding. Have somebody come to your office and say, can you talk to me about Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, baptized him too. And his wife. The invitation of Jesus, very simple, not flashy. It's not padded in promises of the good life. Not promises of the good life here on earth as far as things being great and wonderful and easy and all like that. No, but there is a promise of good life. But Jesus went, he talked to people, he said, come to me, come follow me, and they did. And I guess after all, he is the son of God. But, but even though he was, what if you were in Simon or Andrew's shoes here? Wouldn't there be questions? I mean, wouldn't you want a little bit more information about this before you made a, a, a final decision? Wouldn't you at least want to phone a friend? I mean, come on. If our Bible, if the canon of our Bible is able to expound on all these stories, oh, it would be so thick. Because you don't see all the other workings that are going on right here. But there must have been something else going on. In fact, the Gospel of John, I, I think, it explains things a little further. Um, in John chapter 1, verse 35, and in verses 40 and 42... Uh, you can read your whole section there if you'd like. But it says, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Point here. That the Gospel of John, I think, makes more clear is that the original disciples already, well, they, they must have already had some idea about who Jesus was. John the Baptist had already been telling people, like we read from John uh, 1 35 there above, had already been telling people that Jesus was the Lamb of God. Not to mention, you know, you know how news travels, even in these 
olden times, even in the ancient Near East. People gather and they talk. There's whispers about the Messiah at, at dinner tables and trading posts and fishing boats and sitting around doing whatever, and they're talking and word is spreading. And so when Jesus shows up in front of Andrew and Simon Peter and says, Come follow me, come follow me, and I will send you out fish for people. When he said that, I guess they were ready to go. When John pointed out Jesus to his disciples and said, Look, the Lamb of God, Apostle Paul said, Follow me as I follow Christ. An invitation being extended. An invitation. When we extend the invitation, we extend the edge of the kingdom net. Jesus wants all of us to live in heaven with Him one day. Jesus wants everyone to live in heaven with Him one day. And Jesus invites and encourages us to spread that kingdom net for people to come and know, to, to know Him, to love Him, to follow Him. You know, the gospel, we know this, we've known this. If you've been like me, I've known what it means since I was a small child. Good news, good news, good news. We, we, we like telling of good news. I mean, if, if you're on Facebook, normally you see good news, wouldn't you say? I mean, somebody got a job promotion. Someone got a new car. Or maybe somebody's boat sank, and that's bad news. But then they got a new boat, and that's good news, right? We like sharing good news. We enjoy doing that. We enjoy sharing good things. So the gospel is by nature being good news always worth sharing. Last, last week we talked about how the kingdom net gathers fish of every kind. Put it in another way, the net is indiscriminate as it gathers. It gathers everything. That's a, that's a good reminder, I think, for us as we spread the kingdom net to others. You know, if, if we'll share pictures of our, of our kids with strangers on airplanes, then why wouldn't we also want to share good news of Jesus with them as well? So, let me tell you again right here, I'm going to pause for a second, about my buddy, my friend I went to seminary with. Those of you who have been here know I've told this story. Bill Boutwell, Bill's, Bill's, a, Bill's like one of the greatest guys ever. Bill, Bill was raised going to church but wasn't interested. He was raised within our fellowship. But really wasn't interested. Got out of high school, went in the Army. Tough as nails. Became an Army Ranger. Tough. And anyway, one thing led to another. He was in the Army several years. Got out, was flying in to, uh, to L.A. International Airport. Was on an airplane. And as he was flying in, as he was flying in, the guy sitting next to him, hadn't spoken to him the whole time, um, turned to him and, and introduced himself and said, hey, do you know what the good life is? Bill said, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what do you mean? And the guy took out his Bible and started talking to him about Jesus. Now, yeah, even though he was raised with some biblical knowledge and different things like that, boy, he, he, he had never taken it. He had walked away from it. He had walked away from his, his family values. And there he was doing things his way living his life his way, flying in, final approach, L.A. International Airport, when this guy finally spoke to him. Got his mind to thinking, and uh, they talked for a few minutes, got off the aircraft, and uh, went their separate ways. Bill got to his hotel room, and Bill um, sat down on the bed, he looked over in the desk, pulled out the Gideon's Bible that was there, 
He started reading. One thing led to another, and Bill, uh, Bill became a Christian, became a follower of Jesus. Bill and I were in school together, getting our degrees, and the Iron Curtain was coming down around 1990, 91. Bill said, I want to go to Russia. I want to go to the Soviet Union. Bill did and ended up establishing many churches over there and preaching the gospel. Um, the whole reason I'm telling you this is very simply, this started because some guy on an airplane said, do you know what the good life is? And he shared with him some scripture. That guy doesn't have a clue what he did. And through Bill brought so many people to the Lord. Not a clue. Unless he's dead and gone on to heaven and the good Lord said, look what you did. Like I said, Bill's still a good friend. One day I'm going to have him come down here. Uh, he lives in Montgomery. And, and tell his story. But um, look at how it started. What, do you know what the good life is? Spreading that kingdom net. That's what this guy did on final approach into L.A. International. So we learn in our reading of the scriptures that the disciples are not a perfectly polished group of people, to say the least. Think for a moment about the kinds of people that gathered together through Jesus in the Gospels. Peter, Peter, uneducated, and I would say he was mouthy. Yes. Yeah. Zacchaeus and, and Matthew, well, they were tax collectors. Not, uh, no, not a well-respected, not a good job, no. You know, it, you, I, I tell you, if these people were pre-screened for their kingdom worthiness, do you think they would have made that final cut? No. And neither should we be pre-screening people. Jesus tells us in Matthew 16, 18, and he's building his church. And then we learn over in Revelation what this gathered group looks like. It says, after this I looked, and there for me was a great multitude, no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and for the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And then Isaiah, what uh, was read for us this, this morning by Roger, Isaiah 49, 6 says, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles. This is prophecy here. That my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is everyone. Everyone. The invitation was extended to everyone. No pre-screening, no value assessments, just, just the good news of saving faith. And what we see in response to Jesus and his, and his first disciples is a very radical response to his invitation. You know, as I've already mentioned, the original disciples probably heard about, about Jesus. They heard the whispers. They heard the things going on. They knew a little bit, a little bit of knowledge about Jesus. John the Baptist was busy preparing the way. We know and we know the original timeline. Jesus was baptized. He was taken away into the desert of temptation for 40 days. And then he began his ministry. It's quite possible the early disciples had some knowledge of that. They knew what was going on. So let's look again here at the response of Andrew, Simon, James, and John from our Mark 1 passage. This is great. Simon and Andrew, immediately they left their nets and they followed him. Immediately. 
while James and John left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed. They left their daddy. <laughs> Dad, hey, uh, we'll be back at some point. We got to go. I mean, I, I know you've read this scripture, but have you ever given any other thoughts to how that conversation went down? Dad, glad you got some help, but, uh, well, John and I, we're out of here. We're, this Jesus guy, uh, pretty amazing, and we're going to follow him, and we're not fishing today. The Gospel of Mark highlights the immediacy with which the disciples responded to Christ's invitation. They literally walked off their jobs. Simon and Andrew dropped their nets while James and John left their father standing there in the family boat. <laughs> what an interesting sight that must have been. Apparently, I think this is more astounding than any of you do. As, as I read this story and I, I read it and I read it and I just kept going back over and over and over and I was like, this is, this is crazy. Think about this. Think about the impact Jesus had. Think about the impact the gospel had when they said, we got to go. This is immediate. Could you imagine walking out of your job to answer the call of Christ? I have known of people to do things such as that to become ministers or to do other things within the churches or maybe they became a Christian and the job they were doing the job that they were doing was not in line with the Christian walk I think there's an overarching principle here it sounds something like when Jesus calls it's good to answer. And for the rest of us who aren't Jesus, well, it's our job to simply extend the invitation to everyone we can. Some we respond will haste. I've seen that. Some will take months, even years. My grandfather, my mom's dad, was not baptized until he was, I think, 82. He was in his 80s. I think he was 82 years old. My grandmother had been a Christian for many, 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 many years. 82. Some take a long time, and some might never come around. But their response is between them and God. It's between them and God. The invitation is something, though, we're called to do. Maybe I should say we're commanded to extend. Church, let me tell you this, we need to invite those around us to come along for the ride. It's the greatest, most amazing and challenging journey that any of us will ever take. Following Jesus isn't always easy. Putting down our agendas, our expectations, our hopes, and our dreams, sometimes it costs us everything to follow Christ. And what do we gain in return? Well, we gain an eternity. We gain a forever family. We gain a divine love and acceptance unlike anything, anything that this world has to offer. So church, this morning, this morning as I close, let me tell you, drop the nets. That's what the disciples did when they were fishing. Drop the nets, the kingdom net. Sometimes we've got to step off that boat. Church, we need to answer the call. We need to extend the invitation to others. Church, finally, we need to share the good news. As members of the kingdom, we need to share the good news. And sometimes people aren't going to like the good news. And sometimes people might not say something very nice or very kind to you. Or sometimes people might say, why haven't you brought this up to me years ago? You don't know. God gives the increase.
we share the good news. Church, this morning we're going to have an invitation. You know, this invitation is for people to become a Christian. The invitation is for people to come back to the Lord. And traditionally, at the end of our lessons, we offer this. But I tell you what, you want to become a Christian, you don't have to come forward this morning down the aisle. You can get with me later or one of our elders. If you want to come back to the Lord or if you need prayers, you can get with me. You can get with the elders, whoever, you know, however you would want to do that. You are welcome to do it. If you're not a Christian, you're missing out. It ain't always going to be easy. In fact, sometimes it can be downright hard. But church, being a Christian, even though it can be difficult at times, it's the good life. And later on, for all eternity, we'll even have a better life. This morning, this morning... If you have need of the Lord's invitation in any way, church, we invite you to come right now while together we stand, while we sing.